welcome council and staff and those residents that are joining us. Uh, we're with the committee of the whole meeting and just a bit of uh, tidy up here uh, on the on the council meeting for bylaws 2021-026 and 202127. Uh, Deputy Mayor did call a conflict of interest, so if it would, Madam Clerk, if that's noted. And also uh, by law 2021-028, I did have a conflict of interest. Good, thank you. At this time, uh, words of recognition, and I'll go to Councillor Lacey. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, Dancing Memorial High School is currently running a modified Relay for Life event on April 7th. Um, this is to raise money for an awareness for cancer research. Um, instead of doing a normal run, they're going to do a modified walk available to the students. But on April 7th, they're also doing a uh, drive-through luminary ceremony from seven till nine, um, open to the public. They have a goal to raise $5,000 this year by mm -hmm. April 7th. And they've done a great job so far. And they were just about at $3,000. Um, they, the community and, and local businesses have really helped out. Um, but they still need a lot of help to get to their goal. So if anybody would like to donate and help out, it's uh, relayforlife.ca slash Banting. And um, I'd like to say that the, the leadership team at Banting has been extremely creative in making this a, a fun and eventful event, despite all of the COVID restrictions that have been placed onto them and the lockdown. So congratulations, students. You're well on your way to your goal. And uh, thank you very much for this cancer research. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, anyone else have any recognition? I guess we're not getting out that much, so there's not many awards and recognition. All right, I'll go to uh, the clerk to identify any items to add or delete. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, there are no items to add or delete. Okay. Uh, a motion that the agenda for the Committee of the Whole meeting held on March 15, 2021, be confirmed as circulated. Mover and seconder, please. Councilor Noel and Councilor Foster, all in favor? Gary, thank you. And if you have a peculiar interest, you can call it now or when the item comes up. All right, uh, I'll go back to the clerk to identify items for separate discussion and the reasons are up, Madam Clerk. Okay, thank oh, you. Just, just Pastor McClellan. Thank you, Your Worship. I do have a conflict, a CS2, as I work for the solicitor on the other side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. McLaren. All right, Madam Clerk. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, item CW21, Heritage Advisory Committee. CW54, Proposed Official Plan Amendment, San Marco in Lamus Limited, Huntington Woods, 6209, 14th Line, Town New Defensa, file number DEV209, OMB file number CL110269. For direction, CW55, Drinking Water Summary and Quality Management Report of 2020. We have two deputations. Through your worship, we have CS1, Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, Build It Green, Canada Inc. Uh, sorry, I have, yes. Uh, Just Santa Subdivision, Lots 31 to 37, part of East Side Lot F, Plan 209, file oh, number NP. P1801, LPAT file number PL180947 for direction. CS2, verbal report of the town solicitor closed, three town of New Dakota at the suit of Dallard, no verbal, and Councillor McClellan has pecuniary interest. CS3, verbal report of the CAO closed, Collingwood to Allison Pipeline and supply of water update, no verbal. Good. And Madam CW 57, I have a conflict of interest. I have a, a relative working for the company. 
Okay, we'll go to council now. We're going to uh, Councillor uh, Noya and then up to Foster. Thank you, Worship. Uh, CW11, please. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Uh, thank you, Mayor Mellon. CW51, CW56, CW57, you've already pulled, but that's fine. And CW58, please. Councillor Harrison McIntyre. Sorry about that. CW11. CW59. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McClellan. Oh, wait one second. Sorry, Your Worship. CW53. Councillor McClellan. All mine have actually been pulled now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Sainsbury. Thank you, Your Worship. Some have been pulled, so I'll speak to them at that time. And okay. CW21, I'm not sure if it was pulled. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, we'll go back to the acting clerk to summarize all items identified for separate discussion. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. CW11, request for improvements to Industrial Parkway, Alton Tuck Road and Signs. We have CW51, 2038148, Ontario Limited, Cable Bridge Enterprises Limited, Belterra Estate Subdivision, Amending Subdivision Agreement, Phase 4. CW53, Site Plan Agreement, D11, TO017, Toronto Sheet Metal Inc., Industrial Manufacturing Facility, 6805. Fifth line content. CW54, oh, CW CW55, uh, CW56, award of request for proposal P2009, plumbing services contract. CW57, CW58, award of RFQ Q2105, new Tecumseh Recreation Center pad one lighting upgrade. CW59, National Focus Distribution Logistics, Inc., Lease Agreement Renewal Recreation Land Use, CS1, CS2, and CS3. Councillor Foster. Thank you, Mayor Mill. I'm not sure. I believe Councillor McIntyre asked to pull 5-9, and then she changed it to 5-3, so I didn't hear anybody else call 5-9. Just a small no, issue. sorry. Okay. I did actually pull five nine and five three. My apologies, Councillor. Yes, that. no problem. Um, but I do think that Councillor Sainsbury pulled CW two one, and that wasn't listed. That's okay. correct. We announced it at the beginning, so we just announced CW two one. The options of items not requiring separate discussion, that all items not identified for separate discussion be received and the recommendations therein be recommended to council for adoption. Mover and seconder, please. Councilor Foster, Councilor Beatty, all in favor. Motion's carried, thank you. You're getting your cards mixed up, Councilor Jeb, tonight. <laughs> well, first one is uh, CW1 and Councilor Noyle. Uh, asked to have a poll and Councillor Harris McIntyre, please. Uh, thank you, Worship. First of all, I'd like to thank the Deputy Mayor for bringing this forward. It's long overdue, and uh, I'm glad you thought of this. However, uh, we don't need uh, 
livestock trucks going through their main corridor or Allison, nor, nor do we need gravel trucks. Um, the only trucks that should be permitted is uh, trucks that are delivering supplies to the stores within the downtown core. Um, the town of Caledon in Bolton had the same, uh, same uh, problem. And I don't know how they address it, but there's no trucks allowed in the downtown core. So maybe we can check with them on um, how they regulated this and uh, if they find the trucks that are you know, not supposed to be there or whatever. So that's, I'm just bringing comments forward. Thank you very much. I, I know Director Horn's on. Did you want to reply from Director Horn, Justin Miller? Sure, please. Thank okay. you. Director Horn? Through your worship um, to Councillor Noy, I would defer to my counterpart, uh, Mr. Vatry. His area will be reviewing such a quest with signage and stuff and may be able to share some information. Uh, I'm sure we can complete some research, though, as far as looking at other municipalities and how these have been addressed. Good. Thank you, uh, Director Good. Horn. Good. Director Vatry. Through your worship to Councillor Noy, uh, as part of looking into this, absolutely, we could talk to the town of Bolton and see how they were able to control the truck traffic through their core. And we'll report, include that as part of the report back to Council. Thank you. Councillor Sainsbury. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, on Highway 89 by Trillium Ford, we'd have to work with MTO, I believe, and on the Industrial Parkway with the county. And then the other part from the Tottenham Road westerly is ours, I believe, to do, do signage. But we also had an expensive study done just recently related to sign pollution. So I think it's important to do, but I think it's important to how we do it and how many we put, uh, because they just see them and they fly on by them. But if they have some that are really stand out, then it, it may work. So that was my concern is, is uh, we don't own all those road jurisdictions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jeff. Thank you, Worship. Two comments. I recall Councillor Dorlin when this was brought up when Councillor Dorlin was on council, um, he brought up the, the um, comment that uh, trucking companies with their insurance have to follow certain routes. And if the main street is still part of the King's Highway, I think it, they, it covers under their insurance that they have to stick to certain routes. So that should maybe part of the investigation. And as well, um, working with our GIS, because sometimes when you're doing um, a Google map and directions, they're sending you off in some other route. So to ensure that we have that industrial parkway on, on our mapping, on Google Maps. So those are two comments. Good, thank you. Uh, Councillor Harris McIntyre, did you? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, similar to what Councillor Jeb just said, I would recommend that we reach out either through OGRA um, or just through Google, if that's an option, and have them um, do some rerouting. It's, it is trucks, it is a problem, but also in the summertime, most of you will know that all the summer traffic, people going to campsites are all going through town. And we do want people to go through town because they might stop and go shopping, but um, it, it is an alternative route because there's a lot of RVs and people pulling boats and it would probably just be easier for them if they took the industrial road. So there needs to be a multi-pronged solution and not multi-pronged approach to deal with this, I think. Um, that's it. Good, thank you. Um, moved by Councilor Noyle, second by Councilor Sainsbury, the recommendation is Highway 89 is provincial highway and is intended to carry truck traffic through the region with Victoria Street as its associated connecting link through Allison. And whereas Industrial Parkway, Allison was constructed as a truck bypass and 208 to help alleviate traffic or truck traffic in the Allison downtown core. And whereas the recent concerns have been raised by local business owners with regards to increase in transport traffic within the Allison downtown core. Now therefore be resolved that staff be directed to bring forward a report to the committee of a whole providing recommendations with regards to improving truck routing signs or other measures to assist in directing truck traffic via the industrial parkway. Any further discussion? 
All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. Next one is CW21. Recommendation of the Heritage Advisory Committee's report dated February 23rd, 2021, be received in the recommendation one that all demolition permits received by the town be forwarded to the Heritage Advisory Committee through the committee secretary. And that recommendation two, that staff be directed to prepare a request of interest for naming rights of the Tottenham Water Tower. And further, that any funds generated through naming rights go towards the restoration and repair of the Tottenham Water Towers. Move in a second here, please. Councilor McClellan and Councilor McIntyre. Questions? Councilor Sainsbury. Oh, thank you, Worship. I did pull this one. Uh, I just wondered, related to the water tower itself, was that the Heritage Society and Council in the past declare that? A heritage structure because if we start making just a huge signboard in the sky there may not be any grants for it uh, it may lose its heritage status and protection so can that be part of that report i just want them to look at if we change it from what it was being saved for because we already have a brand new water tower down there um, that that would uh, explain and how we intend to keep it heritage and change its use to not be heritage. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, when this was looked at, um, unfortunately, it isn't something that we can apply for any grants um, to any of the bodies that do give out grants, unless it was changed into something like an observation tower or a museum, um, we wouldn't be able to get any grants for it. And uh, when this was brought forward at the budget or to council, the, the cost was, um, I guess, too high and not attractive to undertake. And um, so the concern is that we're not gonna do anything and the structure will deteriorate. Um, so this is an alternative solution, a way to have the um, tower stay but have council or the taxpayer not have to pay for it. Um, as was discussed at the Heritage Advisory Committee, uh, it's, it's kind of historic in nature to have these water towers act as advertising. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers going downtown Toronto and the Christie's one right down at Dundas, um, but it's, it's, it's not completely out of, um, out of the blue. To, to have that. So um, in an effort to try and save the water tower and potentially, um, you know, have some, so to, to save the water tower, but have somebody else pay for it, <laughs> essentially, that's what the, um, the idea behind this was, so. Deputy Muir. Uh, thank you, Worship. I just want to commend the Heritage Committee for looking outside the box there or trying to find a, ways to come up with alternative financing to save that water tower. So good for you. I, I hope the study goes well. Uh, the only comment I might have is, um, is if we look at the naming rights that Tottenham does remain on the, the water tower as some sort of picture, but anyhow, thank you. Good, thank you. And uh, Councillor Sainsbury. Uh, thank you, or some supplementary, to just uh, as it relates to, to the naming um, part of the report, would that tell us its structural uh, soundness at this point? Because we have done studies on that and I don't remember if they're done annually or how often they're done by staff, just as uh, through their maintenance program. So that could be part of the report, please, that it's structurally sound. Mm, good one. <laughs> good question. Thank you. I'm looking at the CAO right now, I'm putting them on the slide. <laughs> I beg your worship. I, I vaguely remember it was about one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars to keep it structurally sound, but I think to restore it totally was almost half a million dollars. That's why we hesitated. There is an old report on file because I've been a long time on council. Oh, we'll try Rick Battery. <laughs> Uh, through your worship to uh, Councillor Sainsbury, yes, uh, the engineering department did bring forward a report in 2017 
And uh, at that time, we were asking council for a recommendation with respect to what we were going to do. The two options that were put forward was the demolition and the restoration. The restoration was approximately four hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and the demolition was uh, one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. But based on the age of that report, it's probably time that we relook at that tower to ensure it's uh, still structurally sound. Good. Thank you, Thanks, Thank McClellan. You. Oh, I'm not on mute. Uh, thank you, Worship. No, I was just going to speak to the 2017 report, and it did um, break down um, the total $470,000. And I believe at that time, which is, I guess, four years ago now, the to fix the structure or to fix up the structure was about $70,000. Sure, it's gone up at this point, but I just thought I'd mention that. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jeff? Thank you, Worship. Uh, just a question regarding recommendation number one. I thought the demolition permits had been, were being circulated to the Heritage Advisory Committee because uh, when the last Heritage Committee I was sitting on that we were circulated with any um, uh, demolition permits. So just to verify that that is happening because it had been. Director Batry. Uh, through your worship, uh, that question may be better directed to the uh, general manager, Hoppy, as he does deal with the building permits and the building officials. Thank you. Director Hoppy. Your worship, I, I don't have the information right at my fingertips, but I will get that back. Councillor Harris McIntyre is trying to get in here. Go ahead, Councillor Harris McIntyre. Councilor Jeb is correct. We we were circulated before, and then uh, we have a new CBO, and um, just with the changeover with the new committee, uh, I think we hadn't had committees for a really long time. There wasn't a committee happening until you know this recently, end of 2019. So it's just getting back into the habit of circulating um, the committee. Okay. Thank you. Someone else had a card up in this one. Okay. Uh, moved by Councillor Harrison McIntyre, second by Councillor Sainsbury, that the recommendation to Harry's advice. Oh, no, I've already read it. Uh, all in favor. Thank you. Next one is CW41, I believe, Madam Clerk. Sorry, Your Worship, I have CW51. 51, it is. And Councillor Sainsbury, I believe, asked for that one. No, no, author. Oh, sorry. I can't read my own writing, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, thank you kindly, Mayor Mill. I just have two, two uh, quick questions about um, this report and then one comment. The first question would be um, on page 40 of, of the report, it makes a reference to the development's internal water main network consists of water mains ranging in size. Um, I'll carry on. It's noted that some locations within phase four where the fire flows in the interim phase four condition will be less than the town's criteria. Now, obviously it goes on to say that with the ultimate development of the lands, the fire flows will meet the appropriate criteria. The question is, uh, in the interim, is there any reason for, is there any measures being done in the interim to improve the water flows or what are the implications of, of those water flows being less than optimal during the development period until the final fit out. Just a clarification for that one, if I could. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, Director Badger. For your worship to Councillor Foster, I'll, I'd like to start answering this question and then I may have to defer to the fire chief to provide more information. As part of the detailed design, uh, the, the uh, modeling did identify that there were four hydrants in Jane's Crescent that were below the 100 liter per second flow rate. And these ones range in 83 to 87 liters per second. So they're marginally below. However, as we've identified in the report, when we get to the ultimate build out with the looped water mains and everything else, we will far exceed that amount and we'll be in the range of 177 to 188 liters per second. Uh, with respect to how that impacts on fire suppression, I would speak, I'd ask the, uh, Fire Chief, if he could comment on that. 
Mr. Chief Hayden. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you to Councillor Foster. Um, Director Vatry and I discussed this um, as the report was coming together and is coming to the Committee of the Whole and a review of the uh, four hydrants that are highlighted and indicated on uh, the uh, James Crescent um, and the surrounding uh, fire hydrants that are accessible, the 15% uh, the approximate marginal uh, uh, below the, uh, below the uh, standard uh, does not affect the uh, fire operations at this point. And, and it's also pertinent to keep in mind that the uh, these estimates are, are truly estimates uh, put together by the engineering group at this time based on max day demand. And um, I, I'm sure they're conservative at the best part. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary, uh, thank you. if I could. Supplementary. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Vatry and Fire, uh, Fire Chief Hayden. I wasn't really uh, having any doubt. It's just when you read a report and you see those comments, it just requires clarification. So thank you. Uh, one other question and then a quick comment. Just about the lot grading uh, on the next page of the report it refers to the developer's consultant has designed the lot grading to generally conform to town standards. And there are several locations where the development where swells providing lot drainage are below the town's minimum standard. Um, the question obviously is, is obviously that's being, that's being corrected or, or um, what exactly is being done to make sure that the minimum standards are being met for, for, for the lot grading for this area? Uh, Director Battery. Thank you, Your Worship. Your Worship to Councillor Foster. Specifically, those areas are where the new lots will be backing on to the uh, existing forest block and to match the grades at the forest block, there had to be some uh, adjustment of the grades or some uh, softening of our standards with respect to uh, minimum grades. Overall, the grading works and we just identified in those areas that we don't quite meet our minimum 2%. And it's just a big way of being transparent. However, uh, there's a high level of confidence that the grading will work overall in that area. I appreciate the transparency. I have one quick comment if I could, Mayor Mill. Go ahead. Um, I think it's always important to, to note something on, on page 46. I think um, as much as we ask questions, it says here, I'll quote, based on the current landscaping plans, the developer has proposed trees in excess of the minimum requirement. I, for one, and I'm sure when I speak to council, it, it certainly does my heart well to think that uh, the developers actually go above our minimum standards and simply don't use those minimum standards as a basis for what they do. So, uh, um, to the uh, developer, thank you for that. And it's certainly, uh, I didn't want it to go unacknowledged. Thank you. Councillor McClellan. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, Councillor Foster asked my two questions. So I got answers. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? I have a motion moved by Councillor Foster, second by Deputy Mayor Norcross. That report of being 2021-05 be received and further the bylaw be enacted and authorizing the mayor and the clerk to execute the amending subdivision agreement number four between 2038148 Ontario Inc. and the town to facilitate the development of phase four of the Belterra State subdivision of NTT 03002 in the town of New Decumpson, subsequent in the form of attachment number three to the engineering report of being 2021-05, all subjects to the town solicitor's final clearance. And further, that the water and wastewater be allocated for 310 units within phase four of the Belterra State of the Residential Plan of Subdivision. And further, that the benchmark funds received for this development be transferred to the town benchmark reserve fund. And further, that the bylaw be enacted, dedicating the following land as a public highway. Block 277, on a plan 51M1111 uh, in the town of New Decumpsa and being pinned 58144-1200, known as Jane Crescent. Block 272 on plan of 51M111 in the town of New Decumpsa being pinned 58144-1195. Save and accept block 236 on draft M plan being part of pin of 58144-1195, known as Kennedy Boulevard. And Block 264 on plan of 51M of 1111 in the town of New Tecumseh, 
Green Pen 58144-1187, known as Oliver Lane. And Block 268 on plan of 51M-111 in the town of Duty comes to being pin number 58144-1191, known as Morby Drive. Block 269 on plan of 51M-1111 in the town of Duty comes to being pin as 58144-1192, known as Peacock Trail, and Block 253 on Plan 51M of 111 in the town of New Tecumseh. Green pin is 58144-1176, known as Lauren Thomas Place. Any questions on the motion? Councilor McClellan. Sorry, I forgot one. Um, the, <clears throat> sorry, the water allocation for the 310 units, when was that allocated to this, uh, to phase four? I'll go to Director Battery. Through your worship to Councillor McClellan, uh, the, the allocation actually formally takes place this evening as part of the council meeting. Uh, the, these lands had been previously identified in the town supply and demand uh, updates to council as identified as being included in the calculations, but they are formally allocated this evening. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay all in favor. Motion's carried, thank you. Uh, the next one I believe is CW53, Ms. Councilor Harrison McIntyre. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, there was some concern about this development from community members. And um, I was asked if it was possible for the entrance to be from Industrial Road. Um, in Tottenham instead of from the fifth line. So through you. Uh, um, Councillor, uh, sorry, Director Battery, Rick. Through your worship to Councillor Harrison McIntyre, uh, the development that was never anticipated or contemplated as part of the development. They've uh, built, they cited their building close to Nolan Road, and it was intended that they would use Nolan Road. And when we reached out to the county, the county advised they had no concerns with respect to uh, having that driveway on there. So uh, there was never really any discussion or uh, review of having this site uh, accessed from uh, Industrial Road. Any other questions? Councillor McClellan. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I do have a few. So it was mentioned in the report about the urban design guidelines that were approved in 2003. I'm hoping that that report, that one, that the guidelines have maybe been updated in the last 18 years and that we've reapproved the guidelines. So I didn't know if there's, if someone could speak to that. Uh, Director Battery. Through your worship, uh, I that question, Mr. Better, Hoppe? Mr. Yeah. Hoppe, thank you. I thought that. Your worship, yep. thank you. Um, I can answer that question, Councillor McClellan. The uh, the urban design placemaking guidelines, uh, we are still using the document, which is dated to 2003. Um, many of the principles that are in that document, um, especially dealing with employment and industrial lands, are fairly high level and. Uh, uh, quite honestly, um, I think are fairly um, uh, up, to, up to date uh, despite their age. Uh, having said all that, um, Council did approve as part of the 2021 uh, uh, budget process an update uh, to that document. So staff are working uh, on, a, on a, a global update to that document as we speak. Next question, Councilor McClellan. Uh, thank you, Risha. Something that concerns me, and we've seen this before in other development applications, and this one in particular under stormwater management. Um, so they haven't got clearance from the NVCA as of yet uh, because their drainage goes westerly into the creek, which is something we've heard about a few of the larger developments happening in Beaton too, like they're gonna go westerly and drain into the creek. Um, it makes me nervous because the entire town of Beaton is downstream from, from that creek and it has breached before. So if there is 
if the MVCA comes back and says there's no clearance to do this or the creek doesn't have the capacity, does that, that will affect the entire project or could that affect the entire project? I would hope so, but I'd just like that confirmed. Director Patrick? Through your worship to Councillor McClellan, uh, ultimately the agreement is set up in such a fashion that if there are uh, jurisdictions that have uh, authority, if they can't get the approval from those jurisdictions, then the project couldn't move forward. And that's the basic premise of the agreement. I understand that the NVCA has been uh, apprised of this uh, development and there has been work done with the NVCA with respect to quantity and quality control of the site. And uh, I understand that the NVCA uh, there's some minor issues that need to be resolved, but uh, I'm not aware of anything that would be significant that would prevent this uh, development from going forward. Next question, Councillor McClellan. Last one, I promise. Thank you, Director Rattree. <laughs> um, so under the hull route section, there's two options for the, the dump trucks and or regular trucks. Um, the first off, uh, sorry, the first option is to go west on the 5th to Highway 50 good option, gets them out of town quickly. The second option I have a bit of a problem with because it seems as though we're inadvertently encouraging trucks to go through the main street of Beaton. Um, the second option is that they go east on the 5th and north on the Tottenham Road. So my guess would be that they're going to take the first well-paved road to get over east to possibly the 400 and that's going to be right through Beaton. Um, some of the other lines in between um, Tottenham Road and the Tenside Road um, are gravel, aren't great roads, and uh, they probably wouldn't use them. Um, so I'm wondering if we can update the hall route section and to state that they're not to drive through the downtown of Beaton, because I fear that if they go with option two, because they need to get over to the 400, that's exactly what's what's going to happen. I mean, option, so yes, I don't know if that's something that we could possibly amend and update is to ask them within the hall route section to not travel the main street of Beaton. Director Hoppy. Your Worship, I'm sorry to do this to you again, but I think Director Battery would probably be better equipped to answer that. Okay, sorry. Yeah, through your worship to Councillor McClellan, uh, in the agreement itself under clause, I believe it's 11, where we speak to the hall routes themselves, there is the general provision that prevents uh, trucks during construction to be going through the downtown cores of Alliston, Beat, and Tottenham. So uh, that's in the agreement already. But to your point, we can definitely clarify that, that uh, County Road 1 is not to be used either as it does direct uh, vehicles to the uh, downtown of Beaton. But uh, yeah, that can be absolutely um, uh, included in the agreement. Thank that you. That would be much appreciated. Thank Good. you. Councilor Lacey. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, and I just have a couple of questions. Um, one, thank you, Councilor McClellan. I'm actually um, very glad you brought up the hall routes because we do want to keep these trucks out of the downtown cores of all the towns. Um, so I was pretty happy with uh, what they were doing you know, diverting it over to Highway 50 and so on. Um, I did have a couple of quick questions. I think, Director Vatry, you mentioned um, earlier about the capacity um, for, I believe it was uh, a previous item on the agenda. Um, could you, you know, help us out with the capacity with this? Um, has this industrial uh, water capacity been already allocated? Director Patrick? It's uh, through your worship to Councillor Lacey. So what I'd mentioned earlier was that in uh, the water supply and demand report was brought to council in February, 2020. And, and it showed the town what available capacity it had to allocate to various residential and industrial lands. Uh, and one of the things that came out of that report was that larger developments, particularly residential, there wasn't enough capacity for them to go forward uh, until we had the Collingwood expansion. However, there was some residual capacity for small industrial and small residential populations that could go forward. And this development would fit into that category of a small demand. 
That's really thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Just so um, so this is already factored in. It's not going to affect any of our um, capacity coming to Tottenham with the pipeline or anything <laughs> like that. Future. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> Director Patrick. Through your worship to Council Lacey, that is correct. It's been factored into the calculations already. Thank you very much. Joseph Harrison McIntyre. Thank you, your worship. Um, the trucks, the haul route, it doesn't say that they can't go south um, on the town line. Is there, I mean, I don't know if they're going to be going north or south. Like. Do we, we, at this point, I don't think that we know, but no matter which way they go, I'm going to get complaints, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the recommended route goes right by my house. So um, I'm not like pushing for one way or the other. All I'm asking is, um, do we know where they're going to be going? And is, I don't want it to be only one. I, everyone should have to share the burden. <laughs> it, 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 if it's going north or south, we need to have that kind of figured out so we can direct make sure that we direct them and, and put that in the forefront like put it up front right now um because yeah it's fine if they're going if they're going west then yeah going to highway 50 is somewhat direct but if they're going south um they're not going to want to jog north and then have to go south the same with going up to beaten i i just i feel like this is we're creating a an a difficult situation. Uh, thank you. I'll go to. Uh, we need a bypass, county, <laughs> county reps. Get us a Tottenham bypass. Uh, you speak to the deputy mayor, right? He's on that committee. The uh, uh, director, that for your, or Hoppy, whichever mm -hmm. you gentlemen could kind of give some light on comes to Harrison McIntyre's question. Through your worship, uh, maybe I'll take a first stab at it. And if Councillor Hoppy or <laughs> sorry, GM Hoppy could help out. I've got you now. Oh, you got <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, when we when staff tried to put together the haul routes for this uh, this development, what we did was we were looking to get the construction trucks as much as possible to stay on the county roads, and the county roads are the generated gen, um, are the truck routes in our area, so. That's why we picked uh, County or Nolan Road or County Road 14. We went to County Road 50, or alternatively, we'd send them north onto County Road 10 and get them up to Allison. I appreciate what Councillor Harrison Mack and I were saying that the next logical one, if they wanted to go easterly, would be County Road 1. But again, we do have uh, text in our, our agreements that speaks to staying out of the cores of Allison, Beaton, and Tottenham. Uh, Councillor McClellan, without a bypass, I'm not quite sure what other alternatives could realistically be put out there other than using the county road system, which is intended to be those heavy truck routes. Uh, and that's why we, like I said, that's why staff set this up with the developers in this fashion. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, Deputy Mayor Norcroft. I, I'm sorry, and I, I just don't want to, I know we've talked about this before, but so we set up these haul routes. Everyone says they're going to abide by it, but like Councillor Harrison McIntyre is right. Her phone starts ringing because dump trucks are where they're not supposed to be. So um, I, I just want to put it out there. We need to have some sort of mechanism to police that these people are doing it um, and make sure that it's enforced. And uh, Director Battery, I know you do a great job and you're extremely responsive. Um, I just wanted to throw that too. We, we need to make sure that the, these dump trucks are abiding by our policies and our rules going forward. Thank you, Your Worship. Good, thank you. If there's no other questions, uh, I have a move, uh, move by Councillor Howard to McIntyre. Second by Councillor Lacey, that report of being 2021 await be received and further in the bylaw be enacted to authorize the mayor and clerk to enter into a site plan agreement with Toronto Sheet Metal Inc. for the construction of a manufacturing facility located at 6805 Fifth Line, Tottenham, subsequently in a form of attachment number four to report in 2021-08, uh, all subject to the town solicitor's clearance. All, any other questions? All in favor. Thank you. The next one is CW54.
I look for a mover second that report of PD 2021 be received and prove that the official plan and zoning bylaw amended application uh, be directed to proceed per the terms of the agreement upon minutes of settlement until the completion of the County of Simcoe's Municipal Comprehensive Review. And per the staff respectfully request direction from council with respect to a position to be provided to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing related to the proposed MZO request by San Marco Inc. in Lannis Limited. Uh, questions? Council, our Deputy Mayor Norcross. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I prepared to move the first paragraph, but as I read through the report, it says that uh, it looks like there are middle minutes of settlement were entered into by the applicant, the town, the county, and the Minister of Municipal Affairs in 2018. That the parties agree that the appeals of the San Marco application should remain adjourned, sin D, at the tribunal, formerly the board, until the county municipal comprehensive review addressing the allocation of its additional population employment growth to 2041 has been approved by the ministry. So, Your Worship, I would move the first, my recommendation or my move, my motion would be and for that official plan and zoning bylaw amendment application DV209 be directed to proceed for the terms of the agreed upon minutes of settlement until the completion of the county and Simcoe's municipal comprehensive review and the MZO request be denied. I'll put we'll the vote for Thank you. Seconder? Uh, second by Councillor McClellan. Questions, Councillor McClellan? No, I just wanted to second it. Oh, okay. Councillor Saint Barry. Uh, yes, my, my concern is that it, it, because it's already before LPAT, I believe the letter that we received today is from Mr. Cantor, the solicitor for San Marco, and I believe he is waiting in the wings to perhaps speak to, to his request. He gave us three alternatives, and in the letter he has already stated LPAT will make the decision, not our council. Secondly, it has been stated that... Uh, they realize that, that they do not have sewer and water at this time. It is actually a natural extension and it fits the criteria for 40 hectares or less. So they really don't need our permission to go to the MZO because, uh, to have an MZO, because it would be done by the province anyhow, not by us, but the next steps would be done by us. They're just looking for use. Do we want it to be something other than residential? It's been on the books since 2004. It's outside the boundary, but so was treetops. And we just did another 55 houses at treetops with, uh, they had, they're on hold because there isn't water and it's a remnant parcel. But it, it was all before the Places to Grow document, 2003, 2004. We didn't even approve the Places to Grow document until June of 2006. They got caught in the mess. We had two things left that, that are hanging out with OMB or LPAT hearings. And the one which was OPDI attached themselves to this very small development and they're attending the same hearings. So I believe our solicitor is in the wings too. And I'm really concerned that we say yes to some people and we say yes in Beaton. We haven't decided what we'll say yet in Tottenham, but that this one is, it should have been grandfathered really because it's been on the books for so long. It's a natural extension of Briar Hill. It's just across the road, it's for seniors. And there is nothing more needed as the representative for this ward, I can tell you, than senior daycare. I know it sounds odd, but if you're a caregiver and your family has dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever their ailment may be, you never get a break unless there's a place they can go or someone who can care for them. And you can't just ask the neighbor. So I would really like to, to at least work with these people because if LPAT approves it, I want to start off on a good foot with 330 homes for seniors in this town with the senior daycare. I think it's really useful to Greenbrier, Briar Hill, probably the people of Tecumseh Pines uh, and Kingsmere. So I think just to say no, it's just kicking the can down the road. All they want to do is have them agree that it'll be residential. They know they have to go through all these other hoops. Nothing will happen. So if Mr. Cantor would like to speak to, to a very succinct thing and then our solicitor, speak to that as well, then we can see what, before we call the vote, I would request, respectfully request that, Your Worship. Yeah, Councillor Sainsbury, he's not on the agenda to speak tonight. But, uh, well, he sent the letter, it's, it's called Committee of the Whole. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was on the phone somewhere. No. And not Mr. Stone either, the planner? No. 
Okay. Councillor Lacey? Our solicitor's in the wings, I think. Well, I Thank apologize. You. Councillor Lacey, yes, I apologize to you. Councillor, uh, <laughs> I'll go to uh, our town solicitor to uh, respond to Councillor St. Mary. Mr. Feely? Am I off mute? Yes, you are, Jay. Uh, the, well, the, uh, the issue that is before council is really a, a policy decision that council has to make. Um, the minutes of settlement that were entered into did put this down the road to the MCR. Since the, we did that, then the 40 hectare exemption has come in. Uh, so th this property would qualify for the 40 hectare exemption. But then it, it, it really is a question of, uh, of council's policy decision um, as opposed to, I, I don't have a legal opinion upon your decision. Uh, I can tell you whichever decision you make, I could support. Okay. Thank or, you. Or, Thank you, Mr. Feely. Councillor Lacey. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the minutes of settlement, you know, the, this is a, a, a something that went to the LPAP. Um, they entered into a, min a minutes of settlement where they said that they were going to go forward with the MCR. They started the process with the MCR. They're right in the middle of that process. Um, to switch around to an MZO just doesn't seem right. I, I, I can't support that. They, they, the MCR is there. That's what they chose to go forward with. And I think they should follow it through. So, um, you know, I agree with uh, the deputy mayor that we deny the, the MZO this time. Okay, uh, Councillor McClellan, then Councillor Harrison McIntyre, then Councillor Shane <laughs> Perry. Uh, thank you, Worship. It quite clearly stated in, in the report that the applicant hasn't submitted any planning justification studies since 2004, demonstrating how the proposal meets the most up-to-date provincial and county policies which I find concerning. Um, another issue with, with the MZO is it's been stated by the province many times that they don't consider MZO applications for cases that are currently in front of either what formerly used to be the OMB or is presently now LPAT. Um, so I think that would be um, a very quick dismissal of it. Um, it, it worries me overall with, with development in, in New Decumset that we're really getting ahead of ourselves and we're approving these developments and these MZOs and all this stuff and there's no water, there's no wastewater, there's no infrastructure, nothing. And it's very concerning. So I, I absolutely support um, the Deputy Mayor's motion by um, going forward with the minutes of settlement from, from the OMB slash LPAT hearing and um, denying the MZO. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Harrison McIntyre. Thank you, Your Worship. So for me, this has very little to do with um, whether it's a good project or a needed kind of development in the area and has everything to do with using the MZO process to bypass the, the existing planning documents and the existing planning infrastructure that's in place. And um, I think without putting too much weight onto the, to the um, approval that did occur, it did, following that approval at the council table, we had a whole rush of MZO applications. Mm -hmm. So I wanna send a strong message to the community, the development community, that this is not the way to move forward in New Tecumseh. And so I as well would um, not be supporting the MZO. Thank you. Councillor Sainsbury? I think just because the province keeps changing the rules in the middle of the game for the last 17 years, which seems totally unfair in the first place. But secondly, they, they have just made 40 hectares or less is applicable. I attended the one day hearing that they were told the province was going to do the MCR. They signed off on something that didn't happen because then they wasted time almost a year. And then they decided they were going to let the county of Simcoe do it. And the county thought it'd be about a year, a year and a half. Now they say it's not till 2022. So it's going to become an election issue like some other issues have done. And if they could at least finish the whole cotton picking thing, if you'll pardon the expression, 
in 2021, it would prevent it being used for some plank and a platform for, oh, I'll stop that. You know, it's just, it just seems unfair that we've got all these people on adjuncts and this person's been on the books for 17 years and it's, it's half the houses that are at, uh, uh, in Greenbrier, for instance. So it's, it just seems like we make fish and fowl. And, and I just want it to be housing. I don't want it to be in the street over there opposite Friar Hill and Honey Hill and, and Greenbrier. And it would just be out of character. So it protects us that way. At least you know its use. So that's all I'm going to say on the issue. I, I just think that the timing has been absolutely unfair. Greenbrier has been on the books and went through an order in council back in 1987. And uh, we're still only at phase four at Devotero. So it, 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 nothing happens fast. So, and that's why nothing is affordable. And then you wonder where you're going to put mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and they can't afford it on their pensions. So I'm just fighting from that aspect because a lot of people talk to me about those things in my board. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sinfrey. If there isn't any other questions, I'm gonna call a vote. All in favor? Motion's carried. Okay, next is CW5. And I believe we have uh, the public involved in it. this. And if council would allow the public first, then we can uh, talk. Then. And I'll go to the clerk. I have Lori Nevels is first. Your Worship, that is correct. So if Lori Nevels would like to turn her camera and mic on. Okay, I'm just going to be on audio. Okay, Lori, go ahead. You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you, Mayor Milne, members of council. I would like to begin by first thanking the town clerks and acknowledging as always their patience and professionalism. I have three points, two statements and one question. My first statement, the town's website states, and I quote, we provide clean drinking water for residents in the town of New Tecumseh, end of quote. The unpopular truth and the embarrassing truth is that Tottenham's municipally supplied drinking water is dirty. And it's been dirty for well over 20 years. When we pull our laundry out of our washing machines, iron stained, the water is dirty. When our towels are loaded with iron particulate, when we towel off our children after their bath, the water is dirty. If potential businesses decline opening a location in Tottenham because of the orange water, the water is dirty and undesirable for business. The challenge for Tottenham residents is we don't know when the tap water will run orange. We don't know when a visitor will turn on a tap in our home and wash their hands and see urine colored water coming out of our taps. It doesn't matter how many times town employees state Tottenham Water complies with the Ontario Safe Drinking Water Act. Iron contaminated urine colored water is quite frankly disgusting. Tottenham's orange water is a dirty water embarrassment for its residents. I worked for York Region and organized many meetings for their environmental group. I was instructed to not order single use water bottles for meeting participants, no bottled water only tap water for meetings. No matter where the meeting was held in York Region, Georgina, Newmarket, Aurora, Richmond Hill, whatever the location, the tap water ran clear for those meetings. York Region encourages their residents to drink tap water as part of their environmental and conservation messaging. Here in Tottenham, some of our elected rep representatives have recommended that residents consider installing water filtration systems in our homes. If the solution to, excuse me, if the solution to resolve the dirty orange water is a home water filtration system, then the solution for all of Tottenham is obvious. Install filtration at the Tottenham Water Treatment Facility. Water filtration could have been voted on and installed by the 2006 council 2010 council, 2014. Any of those councils could have voted on 
water filtration. 2018 council can vote on it. Filtration to achieve clean water from Tottenham Ham's water facility just makes sense. Let's mix clean Tottenham water with good pipeline water as a minimum for our children. Possibly installing water filtration at Tottenham schools, daycares and recreation center so that our children receive clean water represents respect for our youngest residents. My second statement. On the town's website under municipal water, Tottenham's frequently asked questions, March 5th, 2021, there was an update added. And I quote, this is a further update on the effectiveness of the Tottenham aeration system that was installed in third quarter 2019 in an effort to reduce trihalomethane in the Tottenham water system. RVA has been able to conclude that THM levels have declined with an overall reduction in the running annual average total THM of 10% compared to the pre-aeration sample data from 2019, end of quote. Councillors, Tottenham residents have not received tap water that is 10% lower in THMs since the aeration system was installed. On page 20, figure eight of the report that's attached to this agenda item, figure eight's title, Tottenham THM Trend, the town's table shows that THM values in 2020 are fractionally higher than the pre-aeration years of 2016, 17, 18, and 19. Tottenham residents are not receiving tap water that is 10% lower in THMs since the installation of aeration per the town's reports. Page five of the six page introductory document. So the six pages ahead of, or at the beginning of the 122 pages, page five under conclusion, the town states, and I quote, the quality management system is a proven preventative and proactive approach to ensuring the high quality service and supply of drinking water to our residents, end of quote. Some in Tottenham might argue with the use of the term high quality in relation to the urine colored tap water they receive at times in their homes. Interesting that the town's website also says, says and I quote, discover more information about the town of New Tecumseh's drinking water and annual reports and learn what to do when your drinking water quality may be poor, end of quote, poor. A contradiction to the town's high quality statement. My final point, and I end with a question. On page 22 of this 122 page report, table four titled customer complaints. My question, does the water complaints data include both email complaints and telephone complaints? Or does a customer complaints only inc include telephone call complaints? Thank you for listening and I wait for a response. Okay, thank you, Lori. I'll go to Director Horn. Through your worship to Ms. Neville, uh, the complaints are generated either email or by phone, provided they generate a service request, meaning that there's a required response or action item, and then it would generate a service request followed by a work order to address that. And, and that process is tracked and able to be documented. Okay, question, Councillor Lacey. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, this is actually a question through you to Director Horn. Um, who makes the uh, declaration and, and the decision on our safe water? Is that something we do internally or is that done outside? Director Horn. Through your worship to Councillor Lacey, perhaps you could um, clarify your question. Are you referring to the policy statement? Well, well yeah, like if, if we say that our water is safe, is that just our opinion or is that coming from um, a, a credited source or something like that? Like, how, how do we know that it's safe? Dr. Horn? 
through your worship to Councillor Lacey, that would be based on the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Environment and the associated standards and our ability to meet those standards. Okay, in, so, sorry. In specific, sorry. It, in specific, it'd be the regula regulatory requirements. Okay, our question, is there any questions to our, to our guest speaker, Lori, from Council? Oh, Councillor Sainsbury. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. It was basically on, on the guest speaker's uh, request about filtration, but I just wondered if we could get that answered by Director Horan. Um, has that ever been costed, and would it be even be needed when we have the Georgian Bay treated water in the Tottenham water system? Director Horan? Through Your Worship to Councillor Sainsbury, that would be best addressed through Director Vatry. Thank, Thank you. you. Director Badrick. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Sainsbury, uh, through various EA documents, uh, that costing of the uh, filtration system was looked at. And one of the outcomes of that document was that because we were in the process of building the Tottenham pipeline or Tottenham transmission main, that the timing of that it would, was, was going to be pretty much in line with the timing of bringing online the filtration system. So it was opted that the, uh, we focus our attention and focus our priority on getting the Tottenham transmission main down to Tottenham uh, as the preferred solution to the, the problem. Okay. Supplementary, your worship. Was that in the report for filtration costs? Was, if my memory serves me, was that around $9 million? And we felt because we should wait for the other $40 million system rather than perhaps waste $9 million? Director Patrick? During the same time frame. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Sainsbury, the actual cost of the filtration system isn't at top of mind, but you're probably not too far off the mark with that uh, assumption for the, or that uh, statement of cost. Uh, again, I think it was more of an issue of having the two projects run simultaneously and finish simultaneously. The, the larger benefit was felt to continue with the Tottenham transmission main. Thank you. Any other questions, Lori? Thank you. I'm technologically challenged. Uh, no other questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your thanks, Lori. And our next uh, speaker is Tiffany. While we wait for Tiffany, we, I'm, we have Jessica. Jessica, would you like to go ahead, please? Yes, good evening, Mayor Milne and councillors. Um, I do have a few questions related to the report. Uh, some of them may seem insubstantial, uh, but it's me trying to better understand why things are done. Okay. So Fine. just to start to start off with, um, on page 25 and 48 of the 122 page document, those are the title pages of the Alliston water system report and the Tottenham water system reports. And they're dated February 1st, 2020. Even though the report is for January through December of 2020, and was prepared in 2021. So I was wondering, is that just a typo or is it standard procedure to date the report for the prior year? Director Vatry? If not, Director Horn. The reports are for, or sorry, through your worship to Ms. Jarvis. The reports are for the prior year. That's correct. Okay. Um, because it's it seems going back a few years, at least to 2019 and 2018, the same dating is used. Um, so I don't know if that's just the typo then, or if it's... Anyways. Um, 
Looking at page three, page 28 and page 51 of the document, um, on page three, the maintenance activities are listed. They include things such as swabbing and beaten for the past year and flushing in Tottenham and Alliston are mentioned on page three, but are then not actually identified as significant expenses uh, for maintenance. For in the Alliston uh, report, which experienced flushing once last year and the three Tottenham flushing occurrences uh, in the Tottenham system. And your question, Jessica, I'm sorry, I lost What it. are the costs oh, and the cost, why are they not included for okay. flushing, but they are included for swabbing? Okay, Director Horn. Through your worship, worship to Ms. Jarvis, the, the costs um, are not, they're part of the daily operation of the system. So they would be absorbed, if you will, by our regular wages and part of our normal operations or labor costs and expenses, similar to operating the wells or operating the reservoir or any of those components. It's part of our uh, routine maintenance and operations. The swabbing is more of a significant or not done on an annual basis and outside of the regular scope of operations uh, with a separate operating line and budgeting cost to it, which is why it's uh, deemed significant. Okay, thank you for that. Um, on pages three and 12 of the document, there is mention of how last year, or sorry, the town is uh, still in negotiation with Collingwood for appropriate water volumes uh, for the future. Um, while last year it was mentioned at a committee of the whole meeting um, that the town figured that negotiations would be complete by summer of 2020. So is there an expected date that those water volumes from Collingwood negotiations will be completed by? Um, go to the CAO. Thank you, Mayor Milton, through you to Ms. Jarvis. Uh, we are continuing to work with Collingwood to uh, finalize um, the last few aspects of the agreement. So at this point in time, I can't give you a date other than to say that uh, both us and Collingwood are looking to have things finalized as soon as we possibly can. Um. I have questions about sampling locations. I know that THM sampling locations, especially in Tottenham, are basically determined by uh, the Ministry of the Environment and they are being sampled in multiple places in Tottenham to better understand THM formation in the system, uh, in the distribution system. I noticed that in both Alliston and in the Tottenham water distribution systems, haloacetic acids, HAAs, and iron are tested now in multiple locations. Are those locations also determined by Ministry of the Environment or um, are they randomly selected? Director Horn. Through your worship to Ms. Jarvis, uh, those are determined by the operating authority. So they're, they're randomly selected, so to speak. Okay. And um, I was actually wondering if I am able to comment on a conversation that kind of happened with the last speaker, Lori, and the topic of um, filtration and the town's, I guess, consideration of filtration at source as opposed to the pipeline. Am you I allowed got, to comment on that? You got one minute, Jeff, so you can ask whatever you want. Okay, so what I would like to say is there were a couple of different options that were presented in the 2016 Water Master Plan and for filtration, such as like reverse osmosis, um, the timeline was a couple of years, like 24 months 
implementation and a cost of between two and four million dollars. So I do not think that it was unreasonable that that was something that could have been considered and um, it would have benefited certainly the people of Tottenham who are using the town's water um, because as we now know, the pipeline has taken much longer than expected. So thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much, Jessica. Any questions to Jessica from Council? Councilor Lacey. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, it's just sort of on your, your last comment. I, I do recall that, and I'm not sure if Director Vatry could help us out. Um, I believe the water master plan, when it was presented, there were three options. There was a short-term reverse osmosis, there was a permanent reverse osmosis, and then there was the pipeline, if I, if I recall correctly. Um, and I think if you could verify that the permanent and the pipeline were the two that were um, in question that you were speaking about earlier, the short term was a lower cost, but I believe it was a toss away sort of system. So it was kind of put that system in, it could be done in a shorter period of time, but once the, the uh, rest of the system came in, it would be tossed away. Is that correct? Director Batchy? For your worship to Councillor Lacey, you have an exceptionally good memory. Um, I, it makes, it uh, seems to be ringing a bell, but Councillor Lacey, I cannot at this point confirm that. But uh, again, I do remember that the pipeline was the primary, uh, primarily selected alternative and the reverse osmosis was uh, identified as a temporary solution. And I'm not sure whether we actually went to the, uh, the extent of uh, coming up with an alternative that included a permanent installation of a reverse osmosis plant there. So I'd have to follow up on that, Councillor Lacey. Any other questions to, uh, to uh, Ms. Jarvis? Councillor Lacey? Sorry, um, just in, in response, if you don't mind, to Councillor or sorry, Director Vatry's <laughs> comment, if you could follow up with that, and if you could get back to Ms. Jarvis um, and, and the other speakers today, just to sort of clarify those sections, I just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page with everything, because it can be very confusing, and it was a while back. Director Vatry? Uh, sorry, Your Worship, I was taking some notes. Uh, yes, of course, we will uh, we'll follow up on that. We'll identify what the preferred alternatives were in the water master plan, and uh, we'll bring that forward to the speakers, Ms. Jarvis and Ms. Neville. Good. Thank you. Any last comments, Ms. Jarvis? No, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak, and I look forward to the response, the reply from Director Vatry. Good. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Understand that uh, our other speaker Tiffany is uh, no longer online. So unfortunately, whatever happened. All right, go to council. Any questions from council? I'll read the motion. I said, moved by Councillor Lacey, second by Councillor Harrison McIntyre, that report of feed up 2021-01 be received and further that the 2020 drinking water system summary and quality management report be received. And further, that the drinking water quality management system be endorsed and the mayor be directed to sign the commitment and endorsement documents contained within the operation plan. Any questions? All in favor? Motion's oh, carried. Thank you. BW56. I believe it's Councillor Foster. Am I right, Paul? Thank you, Mayor Mellon. Yes, you're correct. You're correct. Uh, thank you kindly. Just a couple of quick questions. Is there a any one of our qualified staff, a licensed plumber? I guess that question would be to Director uh, Director Horn. Director Horn? Through your worship to Councillor Foster, no. To the best of my knowledge, we do not have any licensed plumbers on staff. Certainly not in the public works department. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. That's supplementary if I could. 
Yes, please. Um, am I correct in my assumption that the reason that with, with this report that we don't see uh, a breakout of the other seven, the other six submitted proposals is because it would, it would significantly give one of their competitors an edge if they knew what their proposal is that what the competition's proposal was? Is that is that the assumption why we don't see that on the report? Director Horn? Through your worship to Councillor Foster, that's correct. There would be proprietary information that would, uh, you know, compromise those other vendors. I could defer to uh, Director Henry if, uh, if there's further information required. Uh, thank you. Just a couple other questions if I, if I could. The, um, thank you for that. First of all, uh, does Council have access to those reports under potentially a confidential cover? And then the company, the successful applicant that um, is looking to expand their contract, how, how long, I believe they're currently the preferred proponent, how long have they been the, um, uh, involved with the municipality? in this capacity. Director Horn. Through your worship to Councillor Foster, again, to the best of my knowledge, um, they were awarded the previous five-year term uh, contract. Uh, prior to that, I don't believe they were on contract. So it would be the previous plumbing contract, which was a five-year term. Okay. If I could, if someone else wants, if I can defer to someone else, if there's no one else who wants to. No, nope, nobody's got the card up, Paul. Okay, thank you. Um, on the second page of, of the report, it refers to Town of New Tecumseh has reserved the right to obtain a competitive bid for any work required is deemed appropriate and in the best interest of the town. Should the town be displeased with the level of service? Can you sort of give us an idea of what conditions would trigger a competitive bid as compared to what sort of work this, this, um, this proponent here would, would be doing for the public works and um, for parks and recreation that it refers to? Director, Howard? Through your worship to Councillor Foster, to use the previous uh, contract as, a, as an example of where this was utilized is sometimes you get into or you're working through a specific job that may be either unique or um, beyond the scope, if you will, of the, or stretching the contractor's ability, like the, the preferred contractor's ability, or it's large in scale. Um, and we may want to just check their pricing. If we get pricing that's in and we are concerned it's uh, maybe a little high or um, that type of thing, then we're able to, you know, cross check that and get a competitive bid to you know, audit, so to speak, to make sure the pricing continues to be appropriate. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Director Horn. And just to, I guess, to Director Henry, um, is uh, under confidential direction, can, does council have access to, um, to see the competitive bids? I, just, I guess it's just my construction experience that uh, makes me curious. If not, that's fine. Director Henry? Through, uh, through the chair, Councillor Foster, um, this is something that we typically do not um, provide. Um, however, it is a little bit of a tricky uh, situation. I would probably want to consult our procurement lawyer on that just to be sure I'm providing you with the correct answer. I wouldn't want to say that we can't if we can. And if we can, I want to make sure that we're following the right procedures so that it is treated confidential and uh, is not being um, used and maybe the intent that it wasn't provided for, if you know what I mean. So if that's okay, I'd prefer to get back to you, maybe via email to members of council, if that would be okay, maybe with the next day or two. Sure. I appreciate that, Director Henry, and I certainly appreciate the confidential aspect of it all. It's just, uh, it's just uh, more uh, a level of curiosity. So I thank you very much for those comments. Director Sainsbury and then Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Just was curious when they have the contract and then we get work orders, they go out to do all of the different things they're capable of doing. Um, do they do it like if they work for three hours on a job or five hours that day on a job, whatever at the museum or wherever the job is, is there an hourly rate? Is that one way we know that they're still competitive? 
how does that work? Can somebody explain? I don't want to know the rate. I just want to know, is that how they know how to pay them at the end of the month, I guess? Um, I guess we'll go to Mr. Henry if you can answer, or Laurie. Through the chair, I guess I'll kind of start with this. Uh, we do actually have our procurement manager um, with us tonight, so she may oh, want to talk as well, but I would imagine that uh, before they begin the work, I would imagine there would be some sort of a conversation that would occur with the department, um, probably some sort of an estimate that would be agreed upon before they kind of trigger it, and they would probably follow it up uh, based off of a per hour per rate basis, and that's what we'd be billed. Um, if they went over that, then there probably need to be some sort of a check-in mechanism to make sure that they're okay to to continue because we'd probably need to issue them a PO, which would probably be their kind of binding authority to continue with the work. So I hope that answers um, Councillor Sainsbury's question. Um, if not, um, we'd be happy to, to try to answer it a little better. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Northcross. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just want to clarify on what my understanding is of one of the questions that Councillor Foster has asked to make sure I understand it properly. <clears throat> I believe that Councillor Foster, through your worship, said to Director Henry that we have a scoring program where we have contractors come and bid on our work and that it's being awarded by staff. And Councillor Foster would like an opportunity to see how that was awarded, what the criteria is, and see that information for himself. And I would, under, I would assume, Councillor Foster, you would like to see the process on why it was awarded and how it was done. That's how I understand that. I, I, I hesitate to think that there's not some mechanism that if council wanted to see confidentially how contracts are being awarded, that we wouldn't be able to uh, take a look at those documents or peruse uh, how decisions are being made. So I, I just wanted to clarify, I know Director Henry's gonna get back to you, Councilor mm -hmm. Foster. I just wanna make sure that's, that I was understanding it correctly. Okay. Thank you. We'll go, we'll go to the CAO. Thank you, Mayor Milne, and through you to uh, members of council. I believe the um, hesitation, and this is something that we're currently uh, investing a lot of effort under uh, Ms. Bedford, Ms. Mr. Henry, and Ms. Godet's uh, expertise, is um, council's uh, role in the procurement process has to be very carefully managed and very carefully designed. And you don't need to look any further than the recent judicial inquiry report that was issued by with respect to uh, ongoing activities in the town of Collingwood uh, to better understand the risks that the town um, uh, is exposed to when um, that relationship or that process uh, the procurement process is not managed very, very carefully. So I think, Deputy Mayor, to answer your question, that's the reason the hesitation is there. Um, so we'll have to look into that very carefully because the last thing with it we would want to do is put the town in any type of position or elevate its exposure within the procurement process. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. Absolutely, Steve, Mr. CEO. I agree with you 100%. Uh, we shouldn't be privy to knowing what the hourly rates are and all that type of stuff, I agree. I just wanted to clarify that Councillor Foster was looking to see what, how the process unfolded. Um, but by all means, I know there, it's not a thin line, it's a very thick and bold line that separates the two. And I, and I respect that process very much. Thank you. Yep. Councillor Foster. Uh, thank you, Mayor Milne, through you. Um, actually, uh, I didn't, uh, maybe I didn't, I articulate myself very clearly. So funny enough, the deputy mayor added something I did not speak to the evalu evaluation of proposals, which I was trying to be all encompassing in my comments. So I, I appreciate the deputy mayor adding that. And as far as the sensitivity around things, uh, let me just make myself extremely clear to anybody that I have no intention of inserting myself in the, in the process. It's more merely to try to clearly understand exactly how the process is done in the hope that maybe at some point in time, this council with our need for oversight of, of, uh, of certain things is, uh, is looked into. So I hope I, uh, I certainly didn't give the impression that I was looking to uh, in any way uh, involve myself in the procurement process. So thank you. Good, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Noy. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, having worked in the service industry for over 45 years, 
I consider us as a town, as a customer. We as a customer have the right to know how much we're being charged an hour. So I don't think the, the, the contractor has the right to hide that information from us. So you know, that's my point. I, I'd like to okay. stress that, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, we've had quite a discussion on this and I have a move by Councillor Foster, second by Councillor Sainsbury that report of PW 2021-03 be received and further that the services of the Pro Trade Plumbing Inc. be retained for specialized plumbing services within the town of Duty Compsis as detailed in the request for proposal of P20-09. For the rate specified in their proposal dated December 15, 2020, and further that a bylaw be enacted and authorizing the mayor and the clerk to enter, enter into a three-year contract with Pro Trade Plumbing Inc. Effective April 1st, 2021 and ending April 1st, 2024 in accordance with the request for proposal of P20-09. And further that the Director of Public Works be authorized to exercise two additional one-year extensions upon successful performance. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motion's carried. At this time, I hand it over to Deputy Mayor for CW57. Thank you, Your Worship. The chair. Thank you. I acknowledge your conflict of interest that you declared and removed yourself from CW57. CW57 is awarded tender number T21-10, Gravel Road Upgrade Program. We have a recommendation that report number PW2021-05 be received. And for the tender number T21-10 be awarded to Cox Construction Limited for the 2021 Gravel Road Upgrade Program contract to be completed on the 10th line from County Road 10 to 10th Side Road to the tender price of $460,448.49 plus HST. And further, that a project contingency allows for the amount to 27,600 be approved within which the general manager of infrastructure and development or his designate be authorized to approve amendments to the scope of work. But further, the necessary bylaw by -law be enacted authorizing the mayor and the clerk to sign the appropriate documents respecting tender number T21-10. I see Councillor Foster. Are you looking to move that, Councillor Foster? No, no, thank you. Can I get a mover and seconder? Uh, Let me get a mover no, and seconder sure. first. Councillor Foster, please. Let me get a mover and seconder first and then I'll open the questions. So I have a move by Councillor Jeb, seconded by Councillor Harrison McIntyre. I now have it on the floor. Councillor Foster, go ahead, please. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I was asking, I, I asked to have this item pulled. That's what I was just looking to comment on. Um, oh, um, anyways, okay. the, sorry, the mayor handed over to me, Councillor Foster of conflict. No problem. It, it was two things. It was the conflict and I, I also asked to have it pulled. So please go ahead. Um, thank you for that. Um, my question is related and it's related to a number of different uh, items, but more specifically, it deals with contingencies. And um, for those that remember uh, a year and a bit ago, I, I questioned the need um, or, the, or the fact that every project that we put out, every capital project generally automatically has a 10% contingency. And at the time I questioned about, I wanted some basic understanding of how often the contingency is used, what percentage of the contingency is used and uh, at that particular time, uh, the answer to the question was that the departments individually track that and in, in, in order to compile that information, it was a fairly lengthy process, but I was assured that, that um, um, in, the, uh, in the upcoming years that it would, be, uh, it would be addressed. So I'd like to speak specifically to this contingency because this gives a bit of an example of that there's for example, we have a $500,000 budgeted number for the program gravel update, and the price came in with HST and the rebate at $460,000, and we've gone down to a 6% contingency, which brings it up to within $308.72 of the half a million dollar project. Now, I don't recall seeing many where we've had less than a 10% contingency, but I, I, I just... I think it's important since we have millions of dollars out there in capital projects that, that we really start to get a better understanding 
of the need for the contingencies, how often they're used, and, and whether or not this is an effective tool to keep putting the contingency in place or whether we need to administer this in a different fashion. So I put that out there to Director Henry, maybe to, uh, to comment if I could, please. Thank you, Councillor Foster. That's an excellent uh, question. Uh, General Manager Hoppy, would you like it to go to the Director of Finance? Yes, please, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, that would be appropriate. Thank you. Director of Finance? Through the Deputy Mayor to Councillor Foster. Um, yeah, this is definitely something that uh, you'd raised uh, just a little over a year ago. At that point in time, you're correct. We were um, saying that it was a very manual process to pull that information. Um, unfortunately, just shortly after that conversation, uh, COVID kind of hit and a bunch of other initiatives and vacancies kind of got in the way. Um, so we are a little delayed on that process, but I can advise that uh, a lot actually is currently, a lot of activity is kind of occurring right now on this very topic, uh, specifically this year. So for example, um, we have actually drafted a policy on capital project administration reporting, which incorporates uh, some discussion around contingency framework and how it would be applied, uh, which is currently in front of the senior management level team right now. And um, we're hoping to maybe present that to council later this spring, depending on discussions that result from the senior management team. So that's the number one thing, which is probably what you're really interested in because um, then that would at least advise you on how we're setting contingencies going forward uh, and what it's based on. Um, the second piece is that corporate services is actually reviewing capital project management systems um, and opportunities to kind of centralize that type of information, metrics and reporting. So on the individual project, we're hoping that um, we're able to illustrate maybe what that contingency is and then maybe how we leveraged or used that contingency on those projects. And then uh, a third piece, which will probably be happening a little bit later in the year, maybe more towards the summer, once we get through kind of the town's procurement policy work, um, which is really important. And that will be coming forward hopefully in early spring as well. And the procurement policy I should add, will also be touching on related topics to project management scope and contingency. But once we get the framework for procurement kind of out of the way, or at least the updated policy out of the way, uh, we wanna be able to take a look at our purchasing system to see what type of technology we can leverage so we can track and report some of that scope adjustment uh, activity on a more regular basis and hopefully come to council on a more regular basis with what, what those results are. So um, pretty fulsome kind of suite of things that are kind of happening. I, I hope that provides Council Foster with some level of comfort that we, we, we're not ignoring his request by any stretch whatsoever, but it's just taking us a little bit more time to kind of move forward with getting ourselves organized. Councillor Foster. Thank you, Director Henry. That's uh, that's twice, I think, maybe I've been misinterpreted in the last 10 minutes, so uh, maybe I need to soften my stance a little bit, but uh, I certainly was not questioning uh, your ability or any ability of anyone uh, at all. I appreciate the fact that something has been done, and it's just really a matter of uh, ensuring that we have transparency and uh, accountability for, uh, for our residents. So thank you very kindly, Mr. Henry. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Is there any other council members have any comments, questions, or concerns before we call the vote? I'm not seeing any. All in favor? Any opposed? I'm not seeing any. Uh, Your Worship, you're back in. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, next one is uh, CW59. I believe it's Councillor Harrison McIntyre called that one. Oh, I'm sorry, CW58. Who called that? Or... Um, Mayor Mellon. Oh, was was <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor Mellon. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll yield this back because it, the last two, uh, one, five, six, and five, seven across all the points I was trying to make. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> a motion moved by Councillor Foster, second by the Deputy Mayor of the Port of PRC 2021. OC 03 be received. I further that the request for quotations of Q21-05 for the supply, delivery, and installation of new lighting fixtures and controls be awarded to Swan Tech Energy Solution Limited in accordance with their proposal dated February 9th 2021 for the upset fee 
of $59,723 plus applicable taxes. And further, that a 10% project contingency allowance in the amount of $6,000 plus ap applicable taxes be approved within which the general manager of infrastructure and development or their designate is authorized to make amendments to the scope of work. And further, that the additional project funding in the amount of $11,879.72 be allocated from the Energy Efficiency Reserve and further that a bylaw be enacted to authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the necessary agreement or amendments with Swatech Energy Solution Limited. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Now, Councillor Harrison McIntyre. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just a question through you <clears throat> to Director Burton. Was this a, an item that was brought forward with a recommendation, a, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago or less, um, that we stop using or taking care of that field, that it was costing staff time to take care of it for, um, for when the school board was gonna use it every once in a while. It's just, that's what I'm recalling. Director Hoppy? No, Burton. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Director Burton. Thank you. Through you, Mary Millen, to Councillor Harris and McIntyre. Um, this, there is a few leases that do come through quite frequently. Uh, this is the one directly across from the uh, fire station number one on Church Street. And this one is actually utilized quite heavily with our minor soccer groups. Um, so the rental for this is, is definitely a need for the town in terms of uh, continuing our service deliveries. Uh, the one I think you're referring to is likely Odeker, um, which is a different property. And it did come forward, I believe, two years ago, uh, requesting, as you indicated, to no longer continue that lease. That lease. Uh, however, council did decide uh, last year to renew the lease yet again uh, for those lands. So just to clarify the two properties. All right. Councillor Beatty, did you have uh, your card up? Okay. Councillor Foster. Uh, thank you, Mayor Mellon. Uh, just not to uh, veer off topic, but uh, Bordica properly is heavily used for those that uh, might be thinking again about removing it. Uh, thank you very kindly. Well, actually, the mayor and I have met there a number of times. So uh, thank you kindly. On behalf of the residents, I can tell you an awful lot of people appreciate it. And it keeps the dogs at a GA rate field, so it's uh, been heavily used. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, <clears throat> motion moved by Harris, uh, Councillor Harris McTier, second by Councillor uh, Reedy, that uh, report PRC 2021-04 be received and further that on a bylaw be enacted to authorize the mayor and the clerk to enter into an agreement with National Focus Distribution Logistics Inc subsequently in the form of attachment number one to report a PRC 2021-04. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you, Carrie. At this time, uh, we'll be going into the committee of a whole. Uh, the committee of a whole will be convened at the closed session to discuss three items. And CS1, local plan in the field tribunal, and a verbal report from the town solicitor and a verbal report from our CAO. And mover and seconder. Councillor Jeb, Councillor McClellan, all in favor? Okay. Well, uh, give us five minutes, Pam, or 10. give us a good five minutes to be. <laughs> 